to thee, O God, glory to thee, O heavenly King, O Comforter of the Spirit of Truth, who art in all places and fillest all things, treasure of good things and giver of life, come into wellness and cleanse us from every stain and save our souls, O good one. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. All holy Trinity, have mercy on us, O Lord, cleanse us from our sins. O Master, pardon our iniquities, O Holy God, visit and heal infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, one God. Brethren, today is August 26, 2020, and we will be reading the stories of saints, the holy martyrs Adrian and his wife Natalia, and 23 companions of Nicomedia, and the Venerable Tithos of the Thebad. The Holy Martyrs Adrian and his wife Natalia, and twenty-three companions of Nicomedia. Adrian and Natalia were husband and wife, both of noble and wealthy families from Nicomedia. Adrian was a pagan and the head of the Praetorium. Natalia was secretly a Christian. They were both young and lived together in marriage for only thirteen months before their martyrdom. When the wicked Emperor Maximian visited Nicomedia, he ordered that Christians be seized and subjected to torture. Twenty-three Christians were hidden in a cave near the city. Someone reported them to the authorities. They were flogged cruelly with cattle whips, beaten with rods, and cast into prison. Soon they were taken before the praetor to register their names. Adrian observed these people, serene and meek, tortured but patient. He made them swear to tell him what they thought their God would give them for enduring so many tortures. They told him of the blessedness of the righteousness of the kingdom of God. With that, Adrian turned to the scribe at once and said to him, Write my name with these saints. I am a Christian also. When the emperor learned of this, he asked Adrian, Have you gone out of your mind? Adrian replied, I have not gone out of my mind, rather I have come to my senses. When she heard of this, Natalia greatly rejoiced. As Adrian sat with the others, chained and in prison, she came and ministered to all of them. When they flogged and intensely tortured her husband, Natalia encouraged him to endure to the end. After lengthy torments and imprisonment, the emperor ordered that the prisoners arms and legs be broken with a hammer and anvil. This was done with twenty-three fellow Christian men. Adrian gave up the spirit under the greatest of tortures. Natalia took their relics to Argyropoulos and buried them honorably there. After a few days, Adrian appeared to her in a heavenly radiance and called out that she should also come to God, and she peacefully gave up her spirit to God. The Venerable Tithos of the Thebaid. Tithos, a disciple of St. Pacomius, was renowned among the ascetics of Egypt. He was abbot of Tebenesi Monastery. He lived his entire life in absolute purity. Once a brother asked him, What path leads to humility? Tithos replied, The path to humility is abstinence, prayer, and knowing that you are lower than anything. Tithos attained a very high degree of perfection. Whenever he lifted his hands in prayer, his spirit rose into ecstasy. He reposed in the Lord in the 4th or 5th century. The Venerable Ipstein is commemorated together with him. 
And also today, these saints are commemorated. Saint Zer Jacob, missionary of Ethiopia, Saint Maximus, Archbishop of Jerusalem, 347, Saint Ebestion, the confessor Egyptian ascetic, 450, Saint Adrian of Uglich, 1504, Saint Adrian, founder of Ondrusov Monastery, 1549, Blessed Cyprian of Storozhev, former outlaw, 16th century, finding of the relic, 1748, of Saint Bastian, schema monk of Aliatur Monastery, 1698, Saint Maria of Devejevo, Fool for Christ, 1931, New Hiero Martyr Nectarius, Bishop of Yaransk, 1937, New Hiero Confessor Roman Archpriest of Moscow, 1937, Greek calendar monk Yosef, Prince of India, 4th century. The miraculous renewal of the Vladimir icon of the Theotokos in Harbin in 1925. Hymn of Praise The Holy Martyr Adrian and his wife Saint Natalia and the 23 Martyrs. The path is thorny, but there are roses in paradise. Sufferings are bitter, but Christ is sweet. What is that sound in the darkened dungeon? The hammer strikes the hard anvil, but it does not forge iron or lead. It breaks the martyr's legs, it breaks the martyr's arms. The martyr is Christ's soldier. One noble white hand falls into the dust, blood stained Saint Adrian's hand. Saint Natalia took her husband's hand and ran from prison with it. She washed this hand, wrapped it in silk, and kissed and bedewed it with tears. Wherever she goes, she bears his hand with her. She places it under her head in sleep and quietly whispers to the severed hand, O hand of my holy Adrian, you have helped me often. Help me again, O hand, raise me to heaven quickly to where Adrian lives with the saints. Indeed, her wait was short. Adrian appeared to Natalia, more beautiful and brilliant than a king and his heavenly voice invited her, Come to me, Natalia, my sister, come to me, and you shall live eternally. The king summons you to the eternal kingdom. Reflection Occasionally one hears the godless words among Christians. Even God cannot help here. There is no danger in which God cannot help, nor are there any enemies who could conquer by their own power without God's permission. Do not ask how God will destroy the powerful army of our enemies. It is easier for God to do than it is for you to breathe. Read how God, by one apparition, terrified the Syrian army to such an extent that it dispersed and Israel was saved. Read how Jerusalem was saved from the powerful army of Babylon without any effort on the part of King Hezekiah, other than his pleading and prayer before God. God did not perform such miracles in ancient times only, but he performs them every time the faithful pray to him. So it was in the year 1395 when the Tartar king Tamerlane surrounded Moscow with his countless soldiers. The Russians brought the miracle-working icon of the Most Holy Theotokos from the town of Vladimir to Moscow, and all the people prayed with tears to the Most Holy and Pure One. Suddenly, for no visible reason, the army of Tartars withdrew hurriedly and fled. What caused this? Tamerlane had a dream in which clouds of saints swept down from the heavens. In their midst, the holy Theotokos stood as queen, surrounded by hosts of angels. The Theotokos sharply rebuked Tamerlane and ordered him to leave the land of the Russians immediately. And the saints raised their staffs at him. In great dread, Tamerlane ordered his troops to withdraw as soon as the day dawned. Contemplation Contemplate the greatness of David's soul. How David entered the camps of Saul at night, and while Saul was sleeping, took his spear and cup. How David's commander wanted to spear Saul, but David forbade it. How David left vengeance to God. 
homily on the sufferings of Christ, how Isaiah foresaw them. I gave my back to the smiters, and my cheeks to them that smite. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Isaiah 50, verse 6. Brethren, this is the prophecy. Now read the exact fulfillment of that prophecy. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Matthew 27, verse 26. Is not this what the prophet foretold? I gave my back to the smiters, and again, one of the officers who stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand. John 18, verse 22. Again they struck him on the face and asked him, saying, Prophecy, who is it that smote thee? Luke 22, verse 64. Is not this what the prophet foretold? I gave my cheeks to them that smite. Furthermore, and they mocked him. Matthew 27, 29. And they smote him on the head with a reed, and did spit upon him. Mark 15, verse 19. This is what the prophet foretold. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Every word of the prophecy is clear. It is amazing that the discerning man of God sees more clearly through the walls of several hundred years than an ordinary eye sees the bottom through clear and shallow water. God, by His irresistible power, opens the spirit of mortal man to see, by the Spirit, events in the distance as clearly as physical eyes see events close by. How can all-seeing God Himself see through the marrow of our bones, through the fog of our thoughts, and through all the secrets of our hearts? He knows our thoughts even before they are born, and knows our desires before they are conceived. He is the only undeceived witness of all events, external and internal, in the heights and the depths, and in the desires to know for our benefit, and for the salvation of our soul, who all seeing and all wonderful witness to all the secrets in heaven on, on earth, our Creator and our Good Provider, thou alone seest the weaknesses of all of us. Help us, O oh help us, to learn that which is necessary for the sake of our eternal salvation. To Thee be glory and praise forever. Amen. <laughs> كما فعلت مريم قديما متقدمة برقص ودفوف مرتلين لابنك الوحيد لأنه بالمجد قد تمجد أيها المسيح حكمة الله وقوته الخالقة والضابطة الكل ثبت كنيستك بدون زيغ غير متزعزع لأنك أنت وحدك قدوس أيها المستقر في القديس أيها المسيح إن أقوال الأنبياء ورموزهم قد أوضحت تجسدك من البتول وضياء بروبك بعث نورا للأمم واللجة تصرخ إليك بابتهاج هاتفا المجد لقدرتك أيها المحب البشر أيها المسيح إنني أحدث بحسن فضائلك الإلهي الذي لا يوصف لأنك قد بازغت من المجد الأزلي شعاعا ذا أقلوم مساويا له في الأزلية وتجسدت من الحاشا البتول فأطلعت شمسا 
للذين في الظلمة والظلال إنما رأحشاء الحوت البحر المتولد في اللجة كانت رسما لدفنك ثلاثي الأيام الذي ظهر يونان النبي نموذجا لا لأنه إذ قد نجا أذبح لك بصوت التسبيح يا رب إن العشق الإلهي قد خذل الغضب الوحشي والنار فلد النار وازدر بالأقوال الملهم بها من الله الصادرة من معزفات الأبرار المثلثات الأنغام مقاومان الآلات الموسيقية لما رتلوا في وسط الله بهاتفي مبارك أنت يا إله أبائنا نسبح ونبارك ونسجد للرب إن ملاك الله الكل يلقوا قد أوضح الله منديا للفتية الأبرار ومحرقا للكفر وجعل والدة الإله ينبوعا لعنصر الحياة ومبيدة للموت ومفيدة للحياة للمرتلين نسبح المبدع وحده نحن المخلصين ونزيده رفعة ما This video was created by John and Catherine. Thank you and God bless.